have you ever struggled with drawing hands? Especially if you want them to look expressive, eye-catching and show a character's personality. If yes, then this video is definitely going to be very helpful for you. So watch on and make sure not to miss everything. Hi, I'm Jan Tisselartz. I'm a cover artist and a character designer for best-selling queer romance authors and knowing how to draw hands fast and well is crucial for my work. Showing emotion and personality for hands helps me to convey the dynamic between the characters I work with so much better. In this video, I will talk about how using 3D models in Clip Studio Paint helps me work faster and forget about wasting time looking for specific hand pose references. And trust me, time is precious when you're a commercial artist, because you have tons of projects lining up and you also have to market yourself, be present on every social media, make video content like this one, for example, and try to stay creative without burning out. Sounds almost incredible, but that's how we live, you know, social media is not really friendly towards artists nowadays. So this video is going to be quite long since I'm going to talk about both technical and creative aspects of using those models. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe, send a link of this video to your friends to join you, grab a beverage of your liking and watch till the end to see the final illustration that I will make with the help of these tools. In this video, I will compare the basic hands that come in the Clip Studio app when you buy it with the custom 3D assets from Acon 3D that I prefer to use on many occasions. By the way, this video is sponsored by Acon 3D and I'm really so happy that they reach out to me to make a video on the products since I've been using their assets for quite a while myself. So it's a huge pleasure to make a video about the platform that sells products I genuinely enjoy and find useful. For those of you who are not familiar with Acon 3D, uh, it's a webtoon and drawing asset platform for artists all around the world. It's already known by most of global webtoon webcomic creators, me included. Uh, even though I'm more into illustration and uh, cover art and character design, but these fields sort of intersect quite a lot. On Acon 3D, I hope I pronounced it correctly, it's not Acon, I believe it's Acon. <laughs> so you can find lots and lots of high quality premium assets that are hardly found on any other websites. And this is true. What also means quite a lot for me is that the assets are categorized really well. So it's much easier to look for a very specific asset that you need right within the website. I must also add, no matter how much I love Clip Studio, but it's so much easier to buy the assets from Acom 3D than in the assets shop, the Clip Studio basic one. You don't need to figure out all of those golden tickets and Clip Studio points, etc. You just pay with PayPal or your credit card in one click, so it's so much easier. Okay, so now I get to show you these three asset sets. Oh my god, asset sets. <laughs> this sounds like a tongue twister, okay. So I'm going to review them and show you how I use them in my illustrations. The first one is a fully rigged hand model with a large collection of poses and additional assets like books, cups, a sword even, handcuffs, the creator definitely understands their target audience, I can say. This collection is a best seller on Acon 3D and I get it why, since it gets so much more than just hand models and poses. I mean, I can use all of these 3D objects as well. It even has male and female character heads, which I don't really use since it's not my art style, but I'm sure many people would love to get them too because like they're quite handy. Maybe I will use them one day as well if I want to simplify or make more stylized art. The second um, pack is a collection of hands with varied anatomy types, something I could not find for ages. I will talk about why I really appreciate variously shaped hands and why these models are so crucial for my work specifically. And the third one is a collection of shoes, also with poses to speed things up. The cool thing about them is that we don't only get a huge variety of sneakers models in different colors. Watch and I will show how to switch colors quickly. It's actually pretty easy, a little bit later in the video. But also, it has a set of legs with those shoes on, so you can easily position them. 
I'm sure that people who use Clip Studio Paint 3D models before know that pain when you try to adjust a shoe model on a model's feet and learn that you can't move them simultaneously. So it solves this problem, kinda. When I first downloaded these assets, I saw tons of files with the other files inside of them and uh, the majority of names were in Korean, so I was a bit confused. And also they had different types of them, some, some of them were for uh, SketchUp, uh, some of them were like character or something, definitely for Clip Studio, but a different type, like not a pose or not a um, 3D asset, not an OBG. And I was also very confused, like how to install them into Clip Studio and not just open them as a file, which was quite easy, but how to save them in my materials in a nice categorized way, so I just don't have to open them through external files every time. And I really like to have my favorite assets like neatly categorized and uh, like one click away from me. The first pack that I opened was this one, and it only had a vague open in Clip Studio format and save as your material guideline, which I didn't get at first, silly me. I even tried to save it through a Clip Studio Paint modeler and it worked, but it was so time consuming. I thought that there must be an easier way, but thankfully I looked into another pack and it gave me some ideas on how I should actually handle it. Even though it still had mostly everything written in Korean, but it had very useful screenshots that um, was telling how the installment process should be done, so it worked. I will make it easier for you and describe it in steps. To install the asset, you need to open each large file like this individually. The poses and the 3D models are grouped according to the subject and it opens in a collection of poses and it looks like this, like a single like, artwork or a file. And if you look on any of them individually, you can see which layer it belongs to. So then you can drag that layer into the assets folder you want to save it in. And here you go, it's there. And next time whenever you want to use it, you can just see it in your materials and it's really easy to use. Of course, you will have to do that manually. And since there are lots of poses and uh, objects, it will take some time. But eventually I believe that it's absolutely worth it. I was quite puzzled what does that no location limit things mean because the only explanation I had was in Korean and uh, I don't understand Korean but after experimenting a little while with image groups and those 3D groups I understood what it stands for and how it works so I'm going to share it now with you because I think it's important and very handy. So here on the left all of the objects like two hands and a coffee mug or a hand and a cigarette they are not just separate objects in a single image but they are a group glued together <laughs> so if you want to move them you will be able to move them around as a single object but if you want to move them individually here on the right there are those objects so you can see them but technically you can just move them around and if you want to save a single object individually for example a cigarette you can delete everything that you don't need from this layer for example a hand and then drag this layer into your material library and it will be saved as a separate object. So this is how you actually get all of those 3D objects that come with this pack for your own use. That's how it works. The cool thing about the shoes models is that you can also change their colors like this, which is super handy. Okay, so now we're moving on to the main subject of this video, it's hands and um, why having different models is so crucial and how you can actually use that to amplify your characters. Hands are known to be especially hard to draw due to their complex anatomy and many details that are hard to capture. But those very details make the hands so emotional and somehow they can be treated as a character on their own. Shape language absolutely applies to drawing hands as a focus point of your illustration, especially when it comes to visually appealing and marketable illustrations. Beautiful hands always attract attention. I have a whole ongoing project with a vampire urban fantasy author where hands are a crucial part of the cover artwork because on the back covers I always do like characters' hands interacting because they express the character dynamic so well. 
My struggle with Clip Studio Paint basic models for my illustration style is that like you don't really get a realistic palm anatomy here. Of course, I can handle this since my anatomy skill is quite high and um, I can alter the basic hand structure to any specific hand shape I need. I could have drawn the hands without any 3D model, to be honest. But the whole point of speeding things up for me is to skip those steps, you know, uh, for the sake of saving time. That's where those models from Aiken 3D become very handy. I will put them all into one image so we can see the differences and you can see like how they vary. We have a long fingers one, which is so good for many anime characters or characters who are aristocrats, vampires, villains, etc. Mind you, these are of course visual stereotypes and unrealistic proportions mostly. For some people they are maybe, but not for everybody. But I wouldn't lie saying that they don't sell well and that I don't get commissioned to draw exactly these type of physique and aesthetic quite often, especially since I mostly work in a very genre specific field which is BL and uh, men loving men sort of stories. And mostly uh, the sort of long slender fingers are what the audience and the authors want. Here we have a um, slightly more realistic, but still very elegant and with defined knuckles and wrist bones and the palm anatomy, exactly what I needed. Like it's also very slender, but probably a little bit closer to what an actual hand of a living person would be. And uh, the hand from this large pack is probably a little less detailed, maybe a little more on the kind of stylized webtoon side, but still also much more realistic than the base one. The variety of the pre-made poses totally makes up for its lack of um, anatomy variety and anatomy realism. I would be completely happy if there was a chunkier, larger built hand and probably a softer one for more chubby characters to fulfill all of my needs, but it's already so much better than what I've had before, so I wouldn't complain. And it's a bit easier for me to draw softer hands from imagination than the ones with more defined bone structure, so really I don't have to complain about this. What's really great about all of those hand models that you can use them as line art without shadows applied like this or click here and apply its shadows which works better if you're up to a more realistic reference for your render. Now let me show you how I'm using those assets in my pipeline. I already have a basic sketch for my illustration so I'm not going to focus on that on this video. This is already long enough. I did it also using Eclipse to do paint basic model. I just prepared it beforehand. I already know which pose for the hands I have in mind, but I want to make it like more detailed and precise. Let's see, I could use this one, or maybe this one to you. Hmm, so many to choose from, but I think thin and long fingers would suit this character better. He has a sad, melancholic pose and look. I plan for him to have rather boxy and edgy clothes, so slender hands can be an interesting contrast that will attract the viewer's attention. Visual contrast is always very appealing and it sparks curiosity, so I try to emphasize it as much as I can. So I take this model and start to adjust it in a way that will suit my idea. Now, uh, when I'm happy with my pose and um, like the hands look really neat, I think, as a focus of my illustration. I want to add the shoes since they are also hard and long to draw. Actually, shoes are my nemesis. Uh, they're really sometimes so hard to capture, especially uh, in complex angles. So I will add them on another layer, uh, not the same one where the hands are, so it doesn't disrupt the previous one. What is really important for me when working with 3D models is that I don't just insert them into the artwork or just trace them exactly as they are, but I prefer to add a personal line quality and flow to my artworks, even if I'm really in a hurry and uh, deadlines are approaching. But you can, for sure, use them in the fastest way possible. We all know how much pressure the work of a webtoon artist can be, or any commercial artist. But what I prefer to do is to trace the base with the basic shapes and forms and then 
work on it in a more freestyle way, like adding flow and line weight, sometimes adjusting the proportions to add the dynamic and integrity until I'm happy with my sketch. And now, finally, I'm up to clean up the line art and start the rendering. If you want to see the whole process, I will make a new video with the more detailed time lapse of the actual painting part. It will include narration, a little bit more detail, tips and tricks, etc. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss my videos. If you have any questions about using Acom 3D models or anything else related to drawing and designing male characters, please ask me in the comments below. I will be happy to answer and maybe make a video uh, to answer your question. Also, I have a referral link from Acom 3D for you to use and it's in the description below. So if you want to buy something from them and try these models, for example, please follow the link. And here you go. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.